New Horizons has been out for nearly three months now and although the game is still fun and I love hanging out with my cute villagers every day, it's hard not to notice that there are a bunch of features that could exist that were in previous Animal Crossing games that just don't. This video isn't intended to bash or insult the game because I find the game enjoyable in its current state, especially knowing there is more to come, but more reminiscing on some of my favourite features that have been removed and speculation on how they could be implemented in the future. So buckle up, there's a lot. Let's start with the glaringly obvious ones missing characters. There are quite a few beloved characters missing from New Horizons. If you have seen any of my previous videos then you'll know I'm particularly saddened by Brewster's absence. However Brewster is one of the lucky ones because he is in the game's code as well as evidence for his cafe. The code has it under Museum Cafe but it does have it as a standalone building which was one of my favourite things about New Leaf and that you could work in it. Learning all of the villagers and special characters favourite coffees was one of my favourite things, maybe even my favourite favourite. It looks like if we do get get Brewster back he'll be part of the museum once again but in a different way, but I hope that there's still a chance we could get a job. The code for the museum cafe includes a gyroid section, gyroids being another feature removed in New Horizons so it looks like our funky dance friends could be returning and hopefully Brewster will have his storage section once again. Another character I dearly miss is Harriet. In City Folk I used to visit Shampoodle all the time, never quite getting the haircut I imagined on my 12 year old self, but it was a pastime nevertheless. Shampoodle has been cut for obvious reasons you can now customise your character from any mirror, but I propose there's a way for Shampoodle to return. Some hairstyles in New Horizons are locked behind a Nook Miles reward, so what if, if Shampoodle came back, Harriet did her own selection that could only be accessed by visiting the hairdressers, or even sell exclusive wigs separate from those in Able Sisters. Other characters that are missing include Pelly, Phyllis and Pete the Post Office Pelicans, Tortimer, Copper and Booker, Katrina, Blanca and Capen. Some of these are for, again, obvious reasons. The post post office trio have been replaced by the postcard stand ran by the dodo duo, there's no mayor on the island and no travel to Tortimer's island so he's been removed, causing some players to assume he had died, and there's no police force on the island and the gates are protected again by the dodos meaning Copper and Booker are out of a job. But the last three could have reason to be in the game. Katrina and her fortune telling had effects on the player, like tripping a lot if they had been given the unlucky fortune, or if they'd been given a lucky finance fortune they'd earn more bells, and even having villagers react a certain way to them depending on the fortune. Personally, I kind of miss tripping, but there's no reason Katrina can't return and show up like characters like Kix and Leaf. Her tent could just pop up once a week for the player to get their fortune. I'm hoping I wasn't the only one disappointed when Blanca didn't show up on April Fool's Day. Again, she can come back and do what she does best, pretend to be other villagers, or go back to drawing on her face and have her show up on your friend's islands. I'm hoping she will be a character that gets added in an update like the holiday characters and we'll see her next year. As for Capen, well, the obvious thing is again the dodo birds have taken his job. The dodo birds have taken over a lot. We fly to the other islands now but that doesn't mean I don't miss Cap'n's shanties. Like most people I think the pier would be a great way to introduce Cap'n back into the series. Possibly he could take us to special islands that are different from the normal ones we visit, maybe more like the one Rover was on for the May Day event. Because fish appear specifically at the pier he doesn't have to be there every day. He could show up as frequently as red or maybe just for special events. This next one is technically three missing features in one, retail, the flea market and Reese and Cyrus. The flea market became retail in New Leaf but both aren't present in New Horizons. The flea market could return as it once was with one weekend your villages and you can sell your items somewhere on the island, possibly in the plaza, but if they weren't to reintroduce the flea market one redditor had a great idea for how to bring back retail. The idea is that it's an app on the phone and works like the selling boxes in Pocket Camp where friends could buy anything you put in it. Making it an app could give Reese and Cyrus another reason to show up besides the wedding event so that they can give you the app. Another idea could be that like Sable gives you her designs, maybe Reese and Cyrus could turn up every so often to give you more designs to customise your furniture. Two more locations that were in New Leaf but not in New Horizons are the Dream Suite and Club LOL. We say farewell to Club LOL as now we can get reactions from our villagers, but I'd like a reason for Dr Shrunk to return even if he just showed up in the cafe. The Dream Suite however might be returning, but that's a big might. Our good old data miner Ninji had reason to believe it based on related texts they found. The Dream Dream Suite was used in New Leaf to visit other players' towns without them having to be online, and the ability to gain patterns that they had used in their town. This was great for getting player made custom patterns. If the Dream Suite is returning, I suspect it will be used the exact same way as before, where you can either visit random islands or input a code or search for a specific one. Maybe this time we could have the addition of cataloguing items we see on other people's islands. This would also hopefully mean the return of Luna and Wendell. The Happy Home Showcase is also a feature that has been removed in New Horizons. The Happy Home Showcase 
showcase worked by street passing other players which then made their home show up in your showcase so you could check out other people's decor. You could also order furniture that was displayed providing it wasn't a special item or customised by Cyrus. I'd love to see this return and not just because I want Digby back but because I love nosing at how other people decorate and it'd save the already excruciatingly long travel time we have now. Before we move away from shops, Nook upgrades. There's only one upgrade in New Horizons right now and when there's been up to five upgrades in previous games that's really disappointing. Ninji did say there was evidence of another upgrade in the code but again we don't know when this will be added. I'd find it deeply disappointing if more upgrades didn't get added and the Nook upgrades are a great way to fit other shops in without having more buildings cluttering the island. Gracie Grace, Shampoodle and Leaf Store are all shops that have previously been a part of Nook Store so there could be room for everyone. Now on to the non-shop based features. Diving and swimming is missing from New Horizons. This was a feature that was brand new to New Leaf. Once you obtained a wetsuit you could swim in the ocean for deep sea creatures. Deep sea creatures work the same as bugs and fish with some being year round and some being seasonal. Again this could be something on the way as Ninji tweeted saying that diving was in the game's code and it would allow you to get fish and seaweed. They also mentioned there being a section for seafood in the Critopedia but it's unknown if the two are related. A new set of collectibles with this feature returning would be amazing as I loved swimming and maybe it would give reason for Pascal to reappear. On the topic of things that were added to New Leaf, fruit. There have always been the native fruits, apples, pears, cherries, oranges, peaches and coconuts that aren't native but would wash upon your shore but New Leaf added a bunch of new fruit. Lychees, durians, lemons, bananas, mangoes and persimmons that have suddenly disappeared in New Horizons. It seems odd to add a bunch of new fruit to then take them away especially when those fruits are more suited to a tropical island. It'd be great to see them return at some point maybe as a chance to spawn on the island tours or for events. Perfect fruit are also missing in the game which again is just an odd removal as it was again only just added in New Leaf and it's in Pocket Camp. Perfect fruit was a way to make a lot of bells especially if you sold them to a town where the fruit wasn't native and in Pocket Camp they can be used to get higher rewards from your campers when they ask for a non-specific fruit. This would be easy to put back in the game and it's confusing as to why these features were removed in the first place. I have to include town ordinances in this list. A lot of these features seem to have started in New Leaf. Town ordinances were an option that affected how your town operated. There were only four and only one could be active at one time. Beautiful Town, Early Bird Town, Night Owl Town and Bell Boom or Wealthy Town. The two I would love to see return are the Early Bird and Night Owl Town ordinances which changed what times your shop was open and when your villagers would be awake. This is great for if you are someone who can only play the game at certain times of the day. They could even add some new ones to better fit the island theme and it would give Isabel an extra thing to do. As this video is getting a little long, here is a quick fire of some of the smaller features that have been removed that I'd love to see return in New Horizons. Gemstones or ore. These could be used for customising furniture and were found with a daily fake rock or by doing island mini games. Island tours and mini games. These were a feature in New Leaf so you could get certain items and furniture sets. There was also the Puzzle League and Desert Island Escape with the Welcome Amiibo update that could be accessed if you had the right furniture items. I think any mini games added to New Horizons would be great, especially multiplayer ones. Amiibo Villagers. Scanning certain amiibo into New Leaf brought you special villagers. Scanning Wolf Link, Link or Zelda's amiibo from The Legend of Zelda brought a Wolf Link villager. Scanning Callie and Marie's amiibo from Splatoon would bring you two villagers, Cece and Vichy who seemed to cosplay them and more. It'd just be nice if they brought these back. Museum Descriptions. The only section of the museum with descriptions is the art section. To get the description for any other section you need to either donate individually or have a spare of the item. I don't feel that Blathers has suddenly become lazy in New Horizons so can we please have these back? Being able to kick the ball. In the original Animal Crossing you could kick the football around. With all these different types of balls around it'd be nice if we could kick them as well as just bounce them. Being able to preview the wallpaper and floorings in Nook's store. In older games you could preview the wallpaper and flooring in Nook's cranny before purchasing it so you could see what it looked like in your house. Bring that back. And that's some of the features that were in previous Animal Crossing games that aren't in New Horizons. I'd love to see a lot of if not all of these return in some form or another. I hope you've enjoyed this video, a like would be appreciated if you did. Leave a comment about any features that may have not been mentioned in this video that you'd like to see return. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to see what else I get up to. There's also a Discord now if you want to join that. Links will be in the description below. And I'll see you next time. Bye!